Hello Frontline, welcome back. Uh, this piece of the CD4 and viral load class is going to talk about what's a CD4 cell. So CD4, those, th those three symbols by themselves get thrown around a lot, but what does it really mean? So CD4 cells are also known by this astounding array of um, mumble jumble, T cells, CD4+, CD4 T lymphocyte helper cells. Those are all alternate names that you might hear for CD4 cells. It's a type of white blood cell or immune system cell, aka immune system cell or lymphocyte. Um, and whenever you see lymphocyte, site the root of the word site means cell, and then lympho um, refers to the lymphatic system, uh, which is another word for the immune system. The root of it is actually the word white, so it's white blood cells. Um, and T cell, when we talk about T cell in general, that's actually a generic term for all of the white blood cells that are made in the thymus. Um, there are also B cells in the immune system, and those are the ones that are made in bone marrow. Um, so this is a picture of a single CD4 cell, uh, sort of a funky looking, funky looking like uh, kind of like a disco ball, but kind of like a soccer ball and kind of like a booger. Um, uh, but it's this is a CD4 cell, and they are made in the thymus gland, which is a piece of the immune system. Uh, sort of, this is likewise, it's a computer animated version of it, but it's located right here. It's be behind and below the sternum or the breastbone. Um, it's well protected there inside the rib cage, uh, and CD4 cells come from there or T lymphocytes. So there are actually many jobs that white blood cells have. Some of them recognize germs uh, that are in the body. Some of them signal other white blood cells for assistance, and this is what the CD4 cell does actually. Some flag the germ um, so that other parts of the immune system see that it's something to attack. And some of them actually do the attacking, the, the, the produce chemicals that kill that germ, and that's actually the job of the CD8 cell, uh, which is another test result that we look for um, in HIV. Uh, and there are other uh, cells that eat up the germ's remains um, and make it disappear, and then other cells tell everyone to cool off and... and um, it, you know, nothing more to see here, carry on about your business. So you can tell that uh, there are a lot of pieces that need to be orchestrated um, in the immune system. There's a lot of moving parts there. So HIV specifically targets CD4 cells um, and turns them into HIV factories. This is a picture of the HIV life cycle. It comes from the New Mexico fact sheets or AIDSinfonet.org, uh, and we'll definitely be spending more time with this diagram in particular in the future. Um, uh, but you can see here a picture of HIV being born from a CD4 cell. So this yellow mass here is a CD4 cell, and HIV actually infects the CD4 cells directly and then the CD4 cells create more HIV cells without even knowing that they're doing it. And that's this is a new HIV that is going to go find an uninfected CD4 cell to infect. Um, so one by one, CD4 cells die um, because of this process. Um, and there's actually a lot that we don't know about how exactly that happens. We have a few scenarios, and probably all three of them happen in some way, but the one scenario is that the CD4 cell knows it's infected and commits cell suicide or apoptosis. Um, another scenario is that the HIV reproduces inside the CD4. We know that happens, but that the process of it budding out of the cell wall again and again damages the cell wall so that it falls apart. 
Um, the third scenario is that CD8 cells, those killer cells, recognize that the CD4 is infected and destroy it themselves. So we're going to learn more about this as the as the years go on. Um, but whichever way it happens, we know that CD4 cells die as a result of HIV infection. Um, and now there's one less CD4 and eventually there aren't enough CD4 cells to defend the body from infection. Um, and opportunistic infections, or OIs, are infections that take that opportunity to attack. CD4s can be rebuilt, um, and if someone's on HIV meds, the immune system gets a break from all the damage of the virus. The body starts to repair itself and starts to rebuild everything that was lost in the HIV damage. Um, and people with low CD4 counts who start on meds can rebuild CD4 counts. And the new T cells do work. They can learn to fight HIV. Unfortunately, they're new. And so they don't carry the memory that the old CD4 cells had of, um, for instance, if someone is exposed to chickenpox when they're eight, then they actually carry cells in their bodies that remember seeing chickenpox. And so if they're exposed to it the next year when they're nine, the body recognizes it and has a head start. They're able to kick that chickenpox's butt before it makes them sick again. So one of the things that is um, most damaging about H an HIV infection is that the history of illnesses that your body has ever responded to is sometimes gone, um, particularly if someone has sustained a lot of damage from HIV and they don't have a lot of CD4 cells left. Th those CD4 cells, not only are they not going to remember chickenpox from childhood, they're not going to remember last year's uh, cold or sinus infection um, and so the body doesn't have a, the same head start it does on fighting those infections. So next up we're going to take a closer look at the specific results that someone might see with a CD4 cell test. We'll see you then.